Hi, this is an Anonymous, and I'm recording a Warcraft 3 audio commentary. I'm going to commentate the ESL Extreme Masters series, which happened about seven days ago, so I'm a little late, but I'll explain that a little more about that later. Right now I have the replay paused here. Um, first of all, a little bit about me and why I'm doing this. First of all, I th when I was really bored one day, I was wandering around YouTube, and I found videos by a certain person named Clazart SC, who it turns out it commentates StarCraft games, and he really got me interested in competitive StarCraft and watching StarCraft, and I just wanted to, you know, I, I had never been interested in StarCraft before, I'd played WarCraft, but I didn't know much about StarCraft or anything, and Clazart really got me interested, and also Diggity, Moltrap, Diggity and Moltrap, the other two commentators, got me interested, and then when I noticed that there were tons of other people, the first one I noticed was Blade of Ire, who started commentating also when Diggity made a call for more commentators, I thought, you know what, there are a lot of people commentating StarCraft games, the call has been answered, but there is no one, as I can find at least, commentating professional WarCraft games. And I thought that was too bad, because I would have liked to see someone commentating professional WarCraft games. Because, and do, uh, doing hopefully doing the same thing for them as Clazart has done for StarCraft in English commentary. So, that's what I'm going to try to do, an ambitious mission, to say the least, because Clazart is really good, and I'm not. Um, anyway, first of all, a note to all of you who are watching this, who used to watch StarCraft, and who still watch StarCraft, presumably. I know that a lot of StarCraft players say, WarCraft sucks, there's no skill in WarCraft. Well, it's true that there's no macro skill in WarCraft. W w StarCraft is a macro game, and WarCraft is not at all. And But that doesn't mean WarCraft is a bad game. Even yet, it has heroes, but that doesn't make it a bad game. What it means is that WarCraft is a much more micro micromanagement-focused game. And since it's not quite so easy to see micromanagement in a replay or in a video, it doesn't, I mean, you don't see huge hordes of tanks coming at each other, setting up at siege mode, and blowing each other to pieces like you do in StarCraft. So it's not quite as visually obvious. But as you get to, as you get more familiar with WarCraft games, I think the micro becomes more interesting to watch, at least as interesting as the StarCraft games. And so WarCraft doesn't suck. Don't just say WarCraft sucks. If you post comments saying Warcraft sucks, well, go ahead and post them. I mean, I can't stop you posting them, but, well, maybe I can. I don't actually know how I, can, how I moderate the comments, but I don't care if you post them, but it's not really doing anything. You're not going to convince anyone who doesn't believe that already. You're not going to convince me, and you're not really saying anything. So, think again before you post those. Anyway, I got this replay from wcreplays.com, which is a great site. They have a lot of replays posted daily, or nearly daily, and they also have audio commentaries by people who are much better than I am, one about one every week. And those these are not just shoutcasts. I'm pretty much doing a shoutcast of the game. But these guys do in-depth analysis. They teach you how to play. I learned everything I know about Warcraft from WC Replay's audio commentators because I'm stupid and I can't learn to play by myself. I still suck, even after however many years it is of playing Warcraft. But I learned everything I know from them. Go to the WCReplays.com and check out that site. Download the audio commentaries, watch them. Yeah, it's worth it. Anyway, now to this game. I'll unpause the replay. Whoops, sorry about that. Ah, I put away my notes. I'll unpause the replay now. And this game is the f a game between Protoys and L Lucifer, MTW Protoys, and MYM Lucifer. Lucifer in yellow at the 11 o'clock position, and Protoys in red at the 4 o'clock position. The map is Turtle Rock. It's Undead Mirror, of course as you can see. Anyway, so Undead Mirror is not my favorite matchup. I find the game somewhat boring, but there you go. I'm commentating it for my first commentary, and that's how things work out sometimes. Anyway, Lucifer probably favored to win this. Probably the better player. I mean, Lucifer is one of the great undeads, and Protoys is one of the good undeads, so it's not quite fair. Anyway, Protoys and Lucifer both appear to be going for fiend builds, so we're going to see fiends versus fiends. Um... And, anyway, what else do I need to say? Yeah, this is a three-game, it's a three-game series, this is the first game, so, and whoever loses this series will be out. So, <coughs> they need to, both are essentially fighting for their tournament lives in this, and not much happening right now, I guess I'll show you the map in case you haven't seen it before, in case you're coming from StarCraft or whatever. There are these four 
small turtle camps, creep camps, which are very easy to creep, and I think creeping both of them, maybe not, maybe it doesn't get you level 2, but creeping both of them will get you very close to level 2 at any rate. And then, Ogre Warrior and Troll Camps here, four of them, symmetrically. And then in the corner, sorry, first of all, I guess I should go here. You have two Goblin Merchants and an Ogre and Troll Camp here, and this Ogre, this Ogre Magi drops a Watcher Ward, which is very useful, it gives you map awareness. And since we have these two players spawning on the same side, there's going to be a fight for control, undoubtedly, over this Ogre Magi camp. So that's the first thing to watch out for in this game. Um, and in the upper right and lower left-hand corners, there are is an expansion site with an Ogre Lord and some other nasty Ogres. This is a pretty difficult camp. And then four more expansions in the center, very difficult to protect and guarded by uh, two medium-sized turtles and a big turtle or, as some people have called them, the Spitting Turtles and the Biting Turtle, because that's how they attack. Anyway, Lucy has his first Fiend out now. I'm going to turn off Fog of War again. Lucy has his first Fiend out now, and he is scouting. He always scout the close, close spawn first in Turtle Rock, because it's so dangerous to have... You, you don't want to have your opponent so close to you and not be aware of that. Anyway, Protoys now going to go ahead and creep the Turtle Camp after scouting his close spawn. Lucifer looks like he's going to do the same thing just slightly later. Both players, of course, will have gone Death Knight with the Fiends, that's the standard build, and gotten their rods of, their skeleton rods, Rod of Necromancy, and Protoys now sending his skeleton out to scout. Lucy appears to be creeping with his skeleton. Oh, okay, actually, Lucy just coiled the turtle, I don't know why he did that, that was kind of a waste of a coil. <coughs> actually, both of them did. I guess they want to get that camp done in a hurry in case the other player was coming across to harass them, but it turned out that neither of them were. Now, Protoys coiling that Ogre Warrior to pull it out, and both players are actually going to camp, creep their Ogre Warrior camps and get level 2, and they'll probably take Unholy Aura at that point. Neither of them is really aware of what the others... Okay, no, now they should be aware of what the others are doing because they've scouted each other. Nerubian Tower going up in Protoys base, and almost certainly, yes, in Lucifer's base as well. And so these hara this little harass is going to fail for both players. So, right now, a very closely mirrored game. Um, Lucifer and Protoys had exactly the same experience. Let's see what their items are. Okay, so <laughs> Lucifer has a Gloves of Haste, while Protoys has a Ring of Protection, and that's just about the only difference between the players at this point. Three Fiends, two Skellies versus three Fiends, two Skellies. And uh, a fourth Fiend coming out for Protoys, and a fourth Fiend coming out for Lucifer. So this is very evenly matched. And, of course, you couldn't expect either player to gain an early advantage in this mirrored game. But now, Protoy seems to have gotten a slight jump on Lucifer and is pushing him back, and this may give him a little bit of opportunity to go and creep something while his opponent's Death Knight is a little bit damaged. And Protoy seems to be sending his Death Knight off to the side to check if that camp was completely crept, or, oh no, he's just going to raise some skeletons. He knows that the camp was crept, he saw that. I forgot. Anyway, now Protoy has two more skeletons than his opponent, and that may give, well, those skeletons by, by Lucifer, too. He got them from his graveyard, so neither player has an advantage again. Okay. Lucifer just killed a skeleton, and that's honestly the only advantage for either player in this game, and it's just been erased. So, not much happening here. Let's see if they're tacking. Uh, Protoys tagging to Tier 2 and putting up his eggs, as is his opponent. Protoys ahead of this tech. Um, and now, Lucy again on the retreat. He's been he's been consistently forced back by Protoys' harassing with his fiends. And <coughs> this may this may cost him, but probably not, as he has Blight and Unholy Aura to heal him, heal himself up. And now Protoys is looks like he's gonna nope, he's gonna go back in for another pass. And we'll see how this turns out. He's getting one of those fiends getting a little bit focused. And you know, pretty much just some really boring skirmishes with fiends going on right now, sorry. Um Alright, now Lucifer Force is a is forced to coil one of his fiends. And Protoys now has about 120 more mana on his Death Knight. But he's going to have to burn a coil there. And now, we're going to see if either player can finally wear the other one down. Lucy getting his Death Knight into a bit of a bad position. Now it's going to take a lot of damage. And you do not you do not want to get your Death Knight damaged ever. It can't heal itself with a coil. So that means that you have to wait for it to very slowly heal up on the Blight. And so I'd say that Protoys has taken a very, very slight advantage so far, but absolutely insignificant. Now now his Death Knight is in a horrible position, and 